Uh, Sixth Sense um, was established in uh, 1995 um, and has grown now to be a medium company with about 14 resorts and 30 spas worldwide uh, in the luxury segment. Um, we just this week uh, had a bricklaying in Sri Lanka where we will be opening two resorts. Um, one of them will be a tented camp, so that will be one a new for us. Um, since the beginning, our founders, uh, Sonu and Eva Shiftasani, has always focused on responsible business, uh, responsible tourism as part of the business model. Um, our core purpose is to create uh, innovative and enlightening slow life. Um, slow life is our uh, core philosophy, uh, which stands for sustainable, organic wellness, um, which is what we are about and how we do it. We want to do it in a learning, inspiring, fun experiences. And that's what we want to do. So whether that is a romantic picnic uh, with candlelight on a sandbank in the middle of the uh, Indian Ocean, or is a picnic up in the mountains uh, in uh, Oman, or arrival experience coming through down by uh, paragliding, um, one thing that is common is that our experiences often or pretty much all the time has an element of nature. This is what is uh, a spectacular part that people want. And yes, this is our ar arrival experience for our resort in Oman. Uh, it's highly recommended. It's a great fun way of entering the resort rather than coming in by, by car. Six senses believe that um, sustainability and luxury goes hand in hand and by combining the height of luxury and sustainability you really brings the best out of uh, um, tourism experience. We don't see any contradictions in it um, and rather than embrace, uh, fearing for that criticism of luxury we want to embrace it and that's where we pride ourselves for winning both sustainability awards uh, but also winning awards for our products such as the Condé Nast uh, Travelers uh, Best of the Best Awards twice. So sustainability is very much about experiences. Uh, we have here um, an outdoor shower and that's very much what guest enjoys doing. Um, and what um, luxury in, in our perspective is defined as it's not the normal conspicuous uh, consumption as most uh, would think of uh, with gold plated showers or, or uh, anything uh, material. For us uh, we define luxury as something different. Um, what people lack nowadays is from living in big cities, from uh, working long long hours, having a lot of uh, uh, pressure Luxury, true luxury is time, it's space, and also getting a bit sense back into nature. So being able to be out taking an outdoor shower uh, in between the trees uh, is uh, a real treat. Or even sitting up on an um, um, outdoor uh, open air uh, restaurant over our herb and vegetable garden, eating food uh, that is grown under the restaurant. Um, or even then afterwards go and uh, look at the stars through our stargazing tower. Uh, these are things that you really seldom get a chance to do and that is what true luxury uh, is about. And I can tell you that is a, it's a beautiful thing uh, in the Maldives to see. Uh, we have a, um, a telescope where you can see Mars, uh, you can see uh, Saturn, uh, see the moon, see the craters in the moon. It's a really, really nice experience. But also what's important when it comes to sustainability is looking at um, what is the key cause. Uh, you have climate change as a big part. Uh, so what we have done, we have looked into energy efficiency and also renewable energy. Uh, this is a, a small uh, 70 kilowatt uh, uh, solar PV plant that we have installed for our last couple of years as a trial. Uh, we're looking into now um, a bigger project with one megawatt that will uh, be able to cover um, uh, and the needs for, for our resorts. Um, the big challenge we have is 
uh, this particular resort, Sonewa Fushi, has, um, it, is off the grid. It's on an island in, in the Maldives. So nighttime is obviously the main challenge. So we need to solve the puzzle with uh, batteries, but uh, we are looking at that and hopefully we have, we're working on a proposal that we can get that done uh, in the near future. So a key importance is to uh, reduce your energy consumption and if you can move on to renewable and this is something you want to do because it makes business sense to do it. You save uh, money and then by that increasing your profit and if we can pull this off uh, we're looking at uh, um, saving substantial amounts of money and uh, particularly also if you're thinking about what's going to happen with oil prices moving forward. Waste is also something that people think much about. We see it as a resource, and that's why we have the concept of uh, waste to wealth. Um, for us, waste is something valuable. For instance, glass, we can crush it uh, and then mix it in with cement. Uh, and rather than throwing it away, uh, we actually can use it and then uh, reduce the need for cement. So save us money on that. Uh, our wood waste, uh, we can then cook in a pyrolysis oven and actually create uh, our own uh, biochar that we can use for barbecues or even um, as um, uh, soil fertilizers. So by that, you are actually um, uh, burying carbon down in the ground. Another thing we're looking at is using our food waste. This often is a big problem in the hospitality industry. Uh, we turn it into our compost uh, and that creates a very nice uh, fertile soil um, that we then can use in our herb and vegetable garden to grow vegetables and herbs that, we, that the chefs can play with and really be able to cook a, a fresh uh, and great meal. Um, and with us, we, we obviously have the help of our rocket scientists. Uh, they, they are really doing a great job and, and uh, in growing our herbal vegetables and one of the big uh, great feedback we get from our clients, clients that are paying five to five hundred to thousand dollars a night is how great our rocket salad is and that is merely because we can take it straight from the ground, cook it on the same day and then serve it fresh and uh, yeah our rocket scientists are really making a big difference uh, for our product and as well keeping our food costs down. Water is another very important issue. Uh, six sensors have, have for the past three years banned all imports of um, bottled water. Uh, so we don't serve imported water. Uh, what we do, we produce our own uh, six sensors drinking water that we serve in glass bottles. Um, and by that we eliminate both the freight, carbon footprint from the freight, but also the plastic waste uh, and serve then our, our locally produced water. Uh, with that, uh, we also felt that um, business is also more than just about making profit. Uh, so uh, we have taken 50% of the revenue from these water sales and given to uh, three different uh, or two different water charities that, clean, that do clean water projects. Uh, and for the past two years, we've been able to ha help uh, 500,000 people uh, get access to clean drinking water or basic sanitation and as you may know uh, lack of drinking water basic sanitation is a huge, huge problem worldwide there's about one billion people without access to uh, fresh drinking water clean drinking water and 2.6 billion without access to basic sanitation so with a simple gesture about giving uh, half a or percent of our revenue throughout our resorts we've been able to help 500,000 people in two years. What's also important then is to know where you're at and, 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 and measure where, where you're at. So what we have developed is our own six census carbon calculator. Uh, we have um, identified where our emissions are and with that we are looking not just at our energy consumption but we're looking at um, food, we're looking at freight, ground travel, air travel, um, go really in depth and detail. And what we have found actually is 84% is of our emissions is from gas flying. Uh, only 12% is uh, from energy. So yeah, we can do and work and, and improve our energy consumption and turn on to renewable, 
but the overall footprint would only be reduced by 12%. So in order to deal with that, because um, we feel that is our responsibility, uh, we have developed several uh, programs to mitigate those carbon emissions from guests flying. I mean, we cannot ask the guests to walk uh, to our resort. It would be nice, but uh, it's not practical. And if you think worldwide, uh, the airline industry often get a lot of criticism and in one way unfairly because on a worldwide basis they count for only two to three percent of worldwide emissions. It would be make much more difference if everyone here in the room turned to be vegetarian and uh, we would then be able to reduce our carbon emission worldwide by up to 18 percent. So uh, the meat industry produces a lot more emissions than the airline industry so it's not really fair to pick on them. But anyway, for us, internally, it is a big issue. So we have had to develop um, programs to deal with that. Uh, we have um, set aside a carbon sense fund in which we uh, charge 2% uh, of our room revenue in certain properties, and some properties 2.5% of total revenue that goes to the carbon sense fund that we use to invest in various projects uh, to uh, help mitigate carbon emissions. Um, one of the projects that we started in Thailand uh, is the Six Senses Reforestation Project. Um, uh, we're working with an organization called Pat Foundation. Uh, we had an opening ceremony 11th of August this year and has since then planted 130,000 trees. And we are scheduled next week to, we've had a little bit delay for the last couple of weeks. You may have heard a, a bit of rain and flooding in Thailand, so it's been a little bit tricky. Uh, but next week we are scheduled to plant another 60,000. So our goal is to plant 200,000 to 250,000 trees per year, uh, which then will mitigate uh, 160,000 ton carbon a year. So, uh, and the way we're doing it, uh, we are working in a national park, Sri Lanka National Park. Um, we are working on a, a methodology called framework species, uh, where basically we do f 20 to 30 different species, all from the local area. And by planting that many different species, you actually attract uh, birds, seeds dispersing birds from areas around. And scientific studies have shown that in the next se six to seven years, you'll actually be able to expand on those 20 to 30 species up to 90 different species. So you get a real lush tropical forest rather than just a, a, um, a plantation, uh, which is much better in terms for wildlife and actually the, and the carbon absorption. So we hope to do this on a, a yearly basis and then by that be able to restore a lot of the um, uh, deforested areas in Thailand and hopefully be, with that be able to help uh, soak up a bit more of the water so, uh, so the rest uh, of, of the country and Bangkok it doesn't flood over too much uh, as, as now. So with that I just wanted to say that um, there's no contradiction in mixing either uh, luxury or sustainability. Um, sustainability can also be uh, in, as you've seen earlier, with uh, volunteer and tourism, uh, uh, small you know, NGOs and parts. Every type of tourism can focus and do responsible tourism. So there's no excuse for not doing it. It does make business sense to do it. Uh, it's, and we have to, when you, when you look at uh, sustainability, not only think about environmental and social. I mean, that's one of the challenges sometimes um, environmentalists uh, do. They only focus on uh, the environmental or the social and forget about the economics. Uh, and on the other hand, business people tend to forget about the, uh, the social and environmental and only focus on economic. But what you really need to do to be truly be responsible and sustainable is to focus on all three, so people, planet, profit, uh, or economic, sustain, um, social and economic sustainability. So that's uh, what I wanted to say, and I hope that's uh, something that you can do. Uh, engaging people is very important, and uh, by that you prosper both helping the local community, helping your employees, 
and your business partner and um, doing a better uh, business. So thank you very much. That's what I had to say. Um, if you want to see some more of the things we're doing, feel free to visit our, our website, sixcenses.com, um, or have a look at our slowlifesymposium.com website. It's a, a event that we do on an annual basis where we invite business leaders and um, uh, politicians and uh, environmentalists to discuss and look at solutions what we can do in order to make changes and particularly focus on small island states and we had this year um, uh, President Nasheed of the Maldives, we had Richard Branson, uh, Edward Norton so quite a few great people that had a good some discussion so please have a look at that thank you